Have you ever wondered what goes into creating an episode of UH? Be a fly on the wall as Jay and Beck brainstorm, banter, and offer a glimpse into their madness. It may be crazy, personal, messy, but hey, it's how they get shit done. So kick off your shoes, pour yourself a drink of the day, grab that comfy throw blanket, and attempt to relax as you enter into the minds of the maniacs. Welcome to The Writing Sessions. Season 3, Episode 5, Blood, Sweat, and Shears, The Writing Sessions. I was sweating. I was either really hot or really cold. It was like a hangover times 10, I reckon. It was really bad. I'm uh, a little under the weather with the mysterious ailments that I probably caught on the subway or at a gallery or at a club or something. A couple of days before, my heart is skipping like fucking crazy. And the heart flutters are gone today because so whatever it is is settling in. But then you had hot so flashes. I woke up fucking shivering and I go to disaster. Is it cold in here? And she just looks at me like with big eyes. And she's like, no, it's not cold in here. And I'm like, it's like Nick the Vampire. And what we do in the shadows when he was transitioning and his eyes are bleeding and he's telling the camera people, is it cold in here? <laughs> and he looks like he's fucking dying. You guys are not cold? I don't know, I can't explain it. Like, it's just, yeah, just real hot and cold and like bloody eyes and flying and stuff. Well, I know what it is. I'm going to diagnose you. What is it? Menopause. So this is the male version of menopause. Male menopause. It's male menopause. Yeah, the the cold, the hot, the racing heart. Probably very tired. Yeah, and then I took a nap, and my nap was not pleasant. Somebody was shooting, like we were in some weird fucking house, and my brother is one of his weird friends, and somebody was coming after his friend, and they were firing outside, and we were ducking under tables and shit. And I'm like, get me my fucking gun. And then I'm like, wait, I don't have a gun. What am I going to do? But, and then the cops got his friend and got everybody, and I woke up, and I'm like, that's a fantastic fucking dream. Thank you so much. So you have anxiety as well. To say this is, it's male menopause. That's what's going on. Well, I have weird dreams, and I fucking get sick. It's always a really weird never really fun when i'm not sick i swear to god i'll have a dream i'm going to a fucking rave and uh, there are all these people i'm meeting there and they're dancing around seriously and it's fantastic or it's just fun and i'm like i'm really liking fucking dreaming and sleeping i never like naps or sleeping but now i kind of am because life is so fucking weird but when i'm sick i get these weird dreams man i don't know what it is the virus or whatever You're but no nah, but yeah a, a graver man yeah, I guess so. Rave to the bloody grave. It keeps you young and keeps you going. That's what I say. Yeah. Geriatric uh-huh. ravers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw one where this lady was dancing the drum and bass. Everybody was like dancing with her and shit, this older lady. And then she walks away from the crowd and starts holding her back and is hunched over. And I'm like, oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. I only had that once. I had that once at Pyramid where I was with my friend Greg when we were going out every weekend. And I was on the dance floor at the 80s night. And then all of a sudden I was on the ground and he's like, what's wrong, dude? I'm like, my fucking back. That was the only time. I mean, I went to a rave recently and danced around a little bit and it was okay. Hmm. But it was light raving, right? I guess so. I mean, I wasn't fucking jumping up and down (laughs) and jumping, speeding up and down and all around. I was just kind of sliding around on my feet and, you know, shit like that. You were doing the scuffle shuffle? Yeah, you check U8 sound and you'll see the rave video up there on one of our nights out. Spider Saga continues. Oh, great. Um, you need to do something about your fucking home. I, you know what I need to do is I need to see a spider exorcist or something because it doesn't matter where I am. Jay, it happened at the cabin with us. It happened. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Drop down right from the ceiling. It happens when I'm not on my property, when I am on my It happens everywhere. I, I can be out on the dock, as we know. Dock spider. Anyway. You mean the ones that go like this? Exactly. Those ones? Those are the ones. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the ones. Okay, so it's lawn mowing day. I was smart. I put the earbuds in, and let me tell you, when I had the earbuds in, I felt, I felt something fly into the earbud and it skipped the song. So that's... What? Thank goodness I protected them, right? I have the protection on my ears. Now, I have an apple tree, and when the apples fall off the tree, the bees like to come and 
I don't know what they're doing. Who's your apple tree planted by Johnny Jingleheimer Schmidt? <laughs> <laughs> Is that his name? John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. John Jacob Jingle. Who the, how do we know that fucking name? I don't understand. I'm looking his him name up right is now. my name, too. I got to know why we know John. Jacob. Jacob. Jingleheimer Schmidt. Jingleheimer Schmidt. Yeah, oh, it's, it's going to say his name is my name, too. That's why we know it. It's a children's song. What? what? I don't even know. Read Go the ahead. lyrics. Read the lyrics. I want okay. To know. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my name, too. We were singing this shit as a kid. Yep. You want to hear the Barney version? Wow, Jen Zos! This shit died after the 80s, apparently. No kid now knows fucking John Schmidt or whatever. (laughs) Whenever we go out. Ha, 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 ha. And that's the song. It's, it's a minute long. Right. I don't understand why we needed to learn this as a kid. Uh, programming, probably programming. You just MK altered us. Probably, I understand. We're going to go on a murdering Yankee. rampage tonight when we go to bed because you just played the trigger song for us. Yeah, we're going to turn into a Manchurian candidate apparently. <laughs> John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Whatever. All right. So what happened with the spider? I have to go under the apple tree past all of the bees. So my plan is to go and shoot the apple chunks towards my neighbor's fence. Oh, nice. That way it clears the bees and keeps them more to a designated area. I'm doing this, and as I'm doing it, I'm, like, going really fast through it because I don't want to get stung, and these fuckers are, they're ready to attack. So I go flying through there, and a couple wasps that are chasing me, hitting the gas, just really going fast. I'm done with the lawn. I've, I've done it all. And uh, I get inside and I'm like, you know what? I'm sweaty and I'm gross, but I'm going to work at the computer before I jump in the shower just for a little bit. So I sat down for about 30 minutes because I just wanted to tie up a few files, just tie it up, get it done off the plate. And I get done. I'm going to go take a shower. So I, I pull my shirt off and right there nestled between my breast and my bra is a fucking spider. Is what? What did it look like? It was about the size of a quarter. It was... Oh, that's great. had thicker legs. Had a little grayish tint to it, like uh, granite looking almost. Like the color of the pavement. And he was thick. Oh, so they're learning. Yeah. He, he was a thick boy. So, of course, what do you think I do? I fling it off me. Because wouldn't you do that? Mm-hmm. And when he lands, he lands on my shirt that I had flung up. And he's dodging in and out of the shirt. And I'm freaking out because this thing has been nestled up to me. And then I look. Sure enough, there's some fang marks. Oh, fuck. He fed on me. God. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's two perfectly little fang marks right there. It was above my breast, like near my shoulder a little bit higher. Like he had must have gotten into my shirt, came down, chomped my shoulder, and then went down to the warm spot. You fucking killed a bunch of my friends. We all told each other to look out for Beck Maniac. And then you're fucking lawnborn all over our fucking little houses. But guess what? What? We fucking evolved. Okay? Do you know you know what color I am? The color of the pavement. Because you now you're not going to be able to see me. Okay? And then on top of that, you see, my invisibility did work. Because you did not see me crawl up into your bra. And fucking have a feast all over the place in your neck and everything. And uh, that's how we take revenge. Were you on me from the beginning of the ride to the end when I found you? How long were you on me for? Did you see me? No. Because I fucking blended in with the fucking granite. Because I'm granite colored now. (laughs) See this rock? And you see me? You can't tell me between the rock, can you? No. No. We've evolved. It's the future, and you're fucked. Here comes the vacuum. Oh, I was just playing around, actually. You better watch out. I know. What is going on? This is real. I'm cursed by the spiders. It's real. Do you know the only time I ever hallucinated in my life was spiders? Kingdom of the Spiders from 1977. So I was a little kid watching this on TV, and it's just basically 
the whole town has been taken over by spiders and he's trying to save his friends and he'll go into a house and there's fucking webs everywhere and shit. And you know, I'm kind of a little bit back. I'm not in front of the TV. I'm back on the couch looking, watching the fucking thing. All of a sudden I've never hallucinated before. I'm got my eye on the TV and I see in front of the TV on the carpet, an army of spiders coming at me and I jumped up and I went nuts. Oh, no. And that was the only time I ever, I ever hallucinated or like sort of saw something. And then I probably should have known back then that they were going to haunt me for my life. Well, this mm-hmm. house is getting sprayed. Don't worry. It's on the list. I'm going to have to figure something out because I literally was told by a psychic this was going to happen. Did the psychic say anything else? I'm going to look. We're going into the message right now. The psychic guys were speaking. When was this? This wasn't long ago. Well, maybe a year. This is a message I get out of nowhere. Have you seen a spider lately or a spider bite? I said, that's an interesting question. What if I tell you yes to both? I was bit on my neck and had a spider dream recently. She said, they're showing me spiders around you. I'm going to a demonstration right now, so I can't continue this spider talk. I said, okay, great. Well, uh, thanks, I think. She says, I look up spider and animal meanings. Isn't that weird that she just randomly messaged me about a spider out of nowhere? Well, let me tell you something. Do you know the one that paratrooped when we were doing <laughs> the show? Everybody listening? Yeah. You're going to hear a future bonus where we're at a campsite thing. And one paratroop down and we didn't kill it and we allowed it to go back up. That means good news is on the way. If the spider fails to reach the ceiling, then it indicates bad luck. Finding spiders on your body means good fortune. Killing a spider is a bad omen will bring bad luck. Oh, no. So maybe you maybe you need to start fucking being nice. This can turn into an all-out fucking Avengers Endgame war. This is already the is an Endgame war, man. It made its way to my boob and hitched a ride for how long? I could have been an hour and a half, could have been two hours. I was mowing for a while. And he is hanging out on me, a granite-looking little, little dinosaur spider that had thick-ass legs. It wasn't like a daddy long leg. This was like a... I'm going to fuck you up. Spider. Daddy long legs don't... They're really the only one that doesn't kind of creep me out because they're just, they're like the things in fucking War of the Worlds that are walking around weirdly, but they don't do anything. They don't do anything, right? They don't bite or anything. No, they just, they just hang out in the corners mostly and just try to eat. They don't really come down and fuck with you at all. I don't, I don't have them running around on me like these other ones. Maybe we need a daddy long leg delegation to speak on our behalf and we'll pay it and dead flies or something i try i would make friends with a daddy but i don't think the daddy could stand up to these other ones i don't think so either man that's why they're not prominent man. that's why they're chilling in the corner of an attic i think maybe maybe try maybe save one and see if the word gets out well let me ask you if i suck it yeah. up into the vacuum i'm not technically killing it i'm just trapping it but you're dooming it to its demise it's gonna wither away and go but i don't know they live a long time in there (laughs) i've got a war going on in there we've been sucking up like bees that fly in not bees but they're hornets they're they're not the good honeybees or anything maybe you should just play john jacob jingleheimer smith save one let it go outside and see if that changes anything because it said if you kill them it's fucking bad luck well we didn't kill the one at the cabin No, and that was right over our show. Right. I'm glad you witnessed this because this is what I go through. I used to get them in our old apartment because in the living room above the table, our living room table, it was like a light. And I never saw them anywhere else. But you'd be watching TV and you would just see this one just paratroop down. And I never understood why. I don't either. Because are they coming down to get a bite? And the, the thing is, if I could look at them and be hypnotized to look at them as like these cutest little stuffed animals or something. Yeah, look up at close under a microscope and you'll change that thought. I don't even need to look at a microscope. I just look at them and I go, nope. Did you ever see Crawl? Remember that movie Crawl? He had like a throwing star thing that he can control. And there's like a beast that comes down and captures the princess and shit like that. This old dude and his crew and the prince's crew and trying to save the princess has to go to the widow of the web. And there's fucking chick is in the middle of this web cave and there's a spider going around and it eats you and it kills you. But he has sand. They get some magic sand that slows time down and he's able to get into the middle. And it's a chick that he used to know that turned into the widow of the web. 
But anyway, this fucking spider, it creeped me out in the 80s. <laughs> because it's a stop motion and it's bouncing on things and it's fucking beating people and shit. I just can't fucking deal with these things. Oh. <sighs> this shit's going to be going on through season 10. Oh. That's another one. Hmm. Spiders and monkeys. They're just not good. They, remember that? We went to the one thing with... And mm -hmm. there was a, those Japanese monkeys, and they wanted to rip my face off. <laughs> Is that where the Mr. Awesome was? Yes. But those okay. Japanese snow monkeys, they had... Oh, some... they flew at us. Yes. And was like... <laughs> I don't... That was a weird ass zoo. Well, I don't even know what that was. Was that legal? It looked like a. Uh, it looked <laughs> like they set it up with cages, and there's no. You know what I mean? Like, where do they put them at night? Like, where? What's going on? There's no jungle atmosphere. There's just in a fucking cage. In the middle no wonder of why they're pissed in off. New Jersey. I'm torn on the fence with uh, zoos. Disaster doesn't like them. I don't either. And, and I agree. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if we don't show humans in person other animals then they'll destroy them well they, why can't we just teach sight, them that mind. in school well then we should teach them that in school but i don't know if that's something what do you you know zoology it sucks it's terrible if you said to me right now you can snap your finger and get rid of all the zoos i would do it but there's a, another little one third of me that goes but we need them to appreciate life and not fucking yeah. be an asshole or whatever because you see all sorts of shit there and it does really suck for them I tell you, this scissor hands is a hell of a barber. This is ridiculous. This is like Zoolander shit. This is not normal. There's a guy here with Freddy Krueger claws. Let me see what what's going on. It's, it's um, like... He's using a samurai sword. Oh, samurai sword. This is completely fucking not. This guy must have cut somebody's fucking head off at some point. And there's no way. Of course, he looks all Euro. Like, oh, here are his fucking claws. You can draw it. With your hands, you can, like a skull. He's trying to be Edward fucking scissor hands, this guy. <laughs> he's got these fingertip claws. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's doing it like Edward scissor hands. He's flicking his hands around, and nothing's really happening. So let's call him oh, finger shears. Finger shears. He's got holsters on the side of each leg, like gun holsters, like the old West. <laughs> now he's got three scissors in each hand uh, stack on top of each other and he's cutting this chick's hair. Can you believe it? And he's got a whole fucking closet full of samurai swords. This guy think he is, man. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. He's burning this chick's hair right now right. and does one comb out. How the fuck can you be precise burning hair? You can't. And it smells horrible. You can't smell. Everybody working there, they're going to get cancer. You can't smell, but let me tell you about how bad burning hair smells. It smells bad. It's a very distinct odor. Anyone that can smell knows the distinct odor of burning hair. Let me just see this chick's hair now. She looks like fucking, she's a friend of Eileen Warrenos. <laughs> that hair. That hair, and she's smiling like it's great. It's not great. <laughs> it looks frizzy and fucking, it looks fake. And now he's bringing out the sword and doing, like, moves. Like, he's, he's not just coming behind it and doing the, the hair. He's walking up to the person, swinging the sword around and doing it, holding it backwards like he's fucking Bruce Lee. <laughs> this guy looks like Peter Stormare from Fargo with the cigarette guy. So you get a show with your cut. The insurance on this place must be through. Oh, my goodness. Not only is he scraping down, but he'll scrape up near the head. No. You mean to tell me he's never slipped? That's just absolutely ludicrous. When I move, you move. Oh, these chicks look like those bad barbarian movies in the 80s when there'd be a chick in the forest and she had bad hair. That's what this hair looks like. I can't wait to show this disaster. Bleaker Beauty Salon. Commercial. Sleeker. Are you frustrated with your scraggly hair? Okay. Are you tired of wearing hats to hide the hideousness? Can't find the right style? Don't trust anyone. Or maybe you're thinking... It's time for a change. Don't trust just anyone when you can trust the technicians here at Bleaker Beauty Salon. By the way, when I was a kid, 
I was a punk, of course, you know, and the across the street, they hated me and was cutting bushes. And I noticed that the cord that he had plugged in was on top. He didn't put the cord around the bushes and then he was holding the hedge clippers. He put it on top of the bushes and he was getting closer to the, (laughs) he was getting closer to the cord. And there was a moment where I could have said something. But because he was thwarting my fuckery in the town, in the north side, I sat and watched, and he got closer and closer. Spark, and like a snap, and he cut his cord, and it was done. And I'm just across the street laughing. He what do you cut mean it was cord done? Did he get electrocuted at all, or no? No, it made a spark, and like went, and then... Oh. He didn't notice his... <laughs> cord was in the middle of the bushes on top it's like he put the cord on top of his bushes a fucking orange cord and didn't see it nice he had really thick glasses he was kind of sort of <laughs> you know what i mean yeah he had de niro super de niro glasses i let him cut his fucking cord butcher's knife bowl cut sure I opted for the blowtorch, Bob, after carefully selecting from one of Bleecker Beauty Studios' out-of-date New Wave-O retro hair book. Francois might have went a little too far. There's a couple of scabs and blood, but the doctors say they're not third-degree burns. On the way out of the ICU, a nurse approved. <laughs> This fucking lady's horribly carved up. And the, the fucking nurse is like, oh, shit, where did you get that blowout? <laughs> She's looking like fucking Freddy Krueger. I may look like a cheese pizza right now, but I can't tell you how wonderful it is not to have to buy any more expensive shampoo, hairspray, or mousse. Not to mention I'll never need another haircut again. We're probably the top hair salon on the block. (laughs) And we're presumably committed to our dwindling but loyal base customers. Here at Bleecker Beauty Studio, we may go too far. Or maybe not far enough. Yeah, that's great. Drink of the day. Should it just be Barbicide Blue or the Barbicide Blue? I guess just Barbicide Blue because when you order, hey, give me a Barbicide. Give me two Barbicide Blues. Okay. I know it's not a commercial, and we usually wax poetic on these. Okay, Kinky Blue Vodka. What, What else would you like in that? Lemon, peach schnapps. That might be nice. A little peach in there? Yeah. Okay. Peach is a comforting, like, not it doesn't blast you when you drink it like a lemon okay i like that okay i'm gonna put crushed ice too because i think we need crushed okay. ice in this one i love crushed ice b is b blue b is your barbicide this means infection control this shit looks like it would kill fucking anything i know it will you know what if aliens come down you know what we're getting barbicide mm-hmm. Barbicide, they have their own awesome jars that say Barbicide on them. They've been making them for 75 years or more now. You know, we have a place here that I go to once in a while. It's near Autos. It's called the Beauty Bar, and it looks like you can get your nails done there. The, the, some of the seats have that hair dryer thing above your head, and the seats are, like, red, plasticky with little glitter and shit, and they have a dance area in back, and they do 80s, so you can go there for free and dance in the 80s, which I've done. I don't understand why they don't have these. I've looked at their drink thing, and I've never seen that on there. If I owned a place called the Beauty Bar that looked like a fucking salon, I would have these jars. Yeah. It hasn't changed in however long. No. I'd be dousing it all over the place. If there are aliens coming down, we're just going to fill up some super soakers with this shit. Barbicide. We'll hit all the salons. People will be like, what are you doing? We're saving the world. Yeah. (laughs) From fucking aliens. (laughs) What are you talking about?
point at me, you little prick. I just fucking took out your army. What is that blue shit? That ain't nothing. We've got double, triple photon torpedoes pointed in your We're direction. Done. Yeah. Well, see, in signs, they used fucking water, but they were stupid. Right. So you know what? We got fucking barbicide. That's right. We got barbicide, bitches. It kills germis. Oh, what does it kill? It kills it, everything. It kills hepatitis, <laughs> HIV, fucking skeevies and everything. Skin, skin bugs. Skin bugs. I killed a couple of spiders with it. I, it kills everything. They melted. What are you going to fucking do? Comb my hair? I don't got any fucking hair. I got a big stupid bald head with big eyes. No worries. We got a super soaker with your name on it full of barbicide. Uh, well, fuck you. What are you going to do about... gonna comb my hair <laughs> <laughs> fucking aliens you know i'm sure that the ones listening to us right now are the weird jellyfish ones like in the nope movie and we're fucked yeah we'll load up the fire hose with barbicide and spray that fucker the wacky inflatable waving people full of barbicide yeah, if that thing turned into the ship and came flying down at us and we shot barbicide in here, it would cut it in half. <laughs> we would be barbicide bombing the fuck out of those UFOs. Yeah. It was only one. So, really. It's only one. The barbicide would have done it first shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The, all you had to do was take a, like, a fucking bullet bow, fucking pump it with barbicide, have it looking up at it. It would suck it up to its intestines and it would have just fucking all melted and just fell into a pile of shit. End of movie. <laughs> <laughs> Kinky Blue Vodka Peach Schnapps Crushed Ice Served in a Manicure Table Jar. Oh, man, that hangover is going to be raging if you drink these things. They say beauty is skin deep, and barbie beside blue pampers the soul. This is better than ass juice. Layer with crushed ice. Yeah. that my fucking parents threw me in a beauty contest when I was like six years old. What are you talking about a beauty contest? What the hell? I, I, I know. They made the fucking living room, which had nothing in it. It was just all like wood. They made me fucking practice walks and shit, and they threw me in. I don't know why. They, I got to ask my mom why she did this. They threw me in a beauty contest and gave me a little suit and shit, and I fucking came in second. And I lost to this little dude who had like a putting on a Ritz style fucking taco looking thing. He had the cane and like the gloves, the white gloves. So he was dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Yeah, we were dressed up like a two dollar fucking Northsider. So I came in second and we had an all expense paid New York thing. So I went to New York with my family and was in this gigantic fucking is this all for real man are you telling me i swear to god i still have the paper that shows me winning second place how do i never know about your barbazon career (laughs) (laughs) so i get down to new york and i'm on a stage of like 60 kids or whatever and my parents didn't prep me on questions they only prepped me walking and always smiling i'm sitting there smiling like a fucking moron and the question for me was what's your favorite tv show and i just i couldn't think and i just said dallas (laughs) i said dallas i really like dallas and they're like all right and then i lost and i was crying because i was pissed off and they took me to like fucking rite aid to the little tiny toy section and i got one of those play-doh sets that does the hair So while they were drinking and fucking smoking weed in the room, I was at the desk playing with my fucking little hair thing. And I was like, (laughs) you know, like the, you know, still fucking upset. Do you think it was because you said Dallas that you lost? And like, if you said Duke's a hazard, you might've been a shoe in. I know. (laughs) I fucked up the same way I fucked up when it came to double dare. And I said, asteroid instead of Astro. (laughs) And then when I became a teen, they encouraged me to go to Barbizon and I went there for two days and I fucking left. I'm like, I'm done with this shit. Enough. I don't know why. You quit your budding career as a model? Please. Please. (laughs) I I made the right choice, okay? (laughs) 
Yeah, so they fucking hoard me out for a free New York trip. That's amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Barbazon. <laughs> I want to play Atari, man, and blow up some things. <laughs> I don't want to sit here twirling. <laughs> I called Barcade and their Frogger machine was down. This is when I was trying to regain the championship. And uh, there used to be this Irish chick there, and I forget her name. I'm trying to think of her name. But she, oh, hey, darling. What's you know, that type of thing. And she answered the phone. I go, yeah, is the Frogger machine working? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Cool. I'll, I'll, be, I'll see you later. And I hung up. And then I always say hi to everybody. And I mm -hmm. fucking said hi to her. And she was like, you're the one that called about the Frogger thing? I could have just said yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever. But I said, oh, no, no, that wasn't cause I wasn't because I didn't want to sound like a fucking like is the is the Frogger machine there? <laughs> Great. You know, and that's all I do. Right. So I said, fucking no. And she's like, I can swear it was you. <laughs> and I was like, no. The other dude was next to her and he was looking at me and I was like they know I'm fucking lying why did it and the whole night and for like a week I'm going why didn't I it's just one of those things when you're high because I don't yeah. drink when I arcade or have drinks until after the arcade because you won't play as well you just it never happens ever so I'll toke a little smoke a cigarette and go in and I was super high and I don't know why I just didn't say fucking yeah this is you this is your family tree and this is your family tree explained our uncles adopted <laughs> <laughs> okay. Adopted. Adopted second brother. Okay. <laughs> second brother's sister. Or or our our great aunt's fourth nephew's niece. <laughs> No, just, just no four. Just niece, our f fourth. Okay. Our great aunt's fourth niece. Our great aunt's nephew's niece. But no nephew. Our great aunt's fourth niece's sibling. Sure. <laughs> okay. okay. Sibling. There it is. MIT's like I'm not figuring these out. You gotta go to the moon? Oh, no problem. Can you figure out Aunt Step's grand niece half removed? No. No. There's no formula for it. What do we have on the agenda? We have. We have each other like shooby 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 wop. Where did that come from? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that Disaster worked at a place called Hair in, in Buffalo. Buffalo? And one time the owner comes up and is like, could you clean the bathroom, please? Some old lady was getting her hair done. Yeah. And she came out of the bathroom and Disaster said it was like if you had a balloon full of shit and you just exploded it all over the fucking room. She said it was all over and yep. she refused. How do you do that? Even if I ate Taco Bell and bratwurst and had rancid beer. Aren't you keeping your ass in the toilet? If you have a watery diarrhea and you're on the toilet, it's going to shoot down into the toilet. You have to lift your ass up and just start spraying all over the walls yeah, and all and, over and the toilet. moving left and right. Right. What is happening? While it's spraying. Or you stood up and then you shot it out of your ass. <laughs> Maybe they don't want to sit down because they can't get up. It's like an exploding pie that just explodes. By that time, your ass muscles must be fucking... Withered? Yeah, like you can only, you know, barely any force. That's the I thing. I don't know, man. I think, you know how we revert to when we're babies as we get old? Yeah. Like when you're a baby, you're crawling, you can't walk. When you get older, you can't walk. You fall, you can break your hip. You're very fragile as a child, as a baby. So maybe that happens as you get older, too, because you're not chewing. The foods you're eating are like soft carrots that have been cooked oh, and like yeah. bananas, right? So you're eating Everything baby food again. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's my theory. I don't know if I'm right. Yeah, if we went on that diet. Eating jars of baby food, essentially. You don't really have any. pop out, you know. Yeah. How many old people do you see eating pizza, Jay? You don't. Oh, that sucks. Right. I used to work there. 
Where? At an old folks' home. I used to do the dishes. This was like 94. And the covers that they put on their dishes are so depressing looking. That army green and the shit orange. Like yeah. that soft Salisbury steak and gravy with some mashed potatoes and like cooked carrots and applesauce. That's pretty much what the food is. Yeah. I used to wheel the carts up sometimes to them and they'd be like... <laughs> And you're like, oh, Jesus. They didn't really have pizza parties or anything either. I got to ask disastrous parents if they make pizza for them. <gasps> They're in a community thing. I would be really surprised. Just dealing with my grandma in the older homes, I never saw pizza. Yeah. Warned no more banging. This. No more fucking blowing shit up. No. Nope. No more going to the movies or nope. going dancing at clubs or having party fun nights, drinks, and smoking. Oh, you got to hope you can get up and down off the toilet. Because then once that stops, you're in a home. Yeah. I can't imagine not getting excited for a rave like I did a month ago or getting excited for tomorrow, going to the arcade or going galleries or... Yeah, but what happens when the kids look at you like you're the fucking weirdo? I don't give a fuck. There are people that go and they don't give a fuck. That's a graver, yeah. a geriatric graver. I, there was one of the last ones before COVID was like a secret loft party. See, these things pop up and they never come back again and you're pissed off. That's what sucks. But anyway, I went for this one. They had couches and shit everywhere. People are smoking weed. Everybody's dancing. Do you remember that Kath and Kim show? Remember the mom with her curly hair? <laughs> yeah. Bird looking? I'm on the couch smoking weed and I look over and that chick from Kath and Kim was there. She was probably about 60. Dancing with everybody. Are you sure and, it was and, her? No, it wasn't her, but I'm just saying it looked like her. Oh, okay. Like maybe 55. Okay. And I was just like... That lady's my fucking hero. She's allowed to go in. They can't say no. I didn't feel old. There were people that looked probably 40, 35 that were there. So I don't, I'll keep going as long as I fucking can. You keep going, man. You go until the wheels fall off. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> go until the wheels fall off. <laughs> I think I made a fucking fool of myself yesterday. When I meet people for the first time, I'm like nervous, right? right. But I always ask them questions because I want to know about them. But little details will slip my mind because I'm thinking of the next thing to say and I'll miss things. Okay. So we're sitting up there, we're watching music videos, the sun setting and shit. And this couple comes up that isn't going to stick around. And they were just talking about how their son lives in South Korea. And, you know, I'm like, is it Seoul? No, it was, it's way south. It's more south. They, they don't speak English there at all. And then I think I said something like, so how is it living there? And they're like, oh, no, we just were visiting our friends. What? And they like, looked, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, I should, I, yeah, I didn't think, I didn't hear that they weren't living there. And then I think it made me seem odd. I think I'm, I come up as odd to people sometimes because I do shit like this. What color should it be, Jay? What are we making the color? Well, they usually get it, they have blondish hair, like light brown, you know what I mean? Like all the grannies. The grannies not... have white hair or gray hair, and they get it colored. And a lot, sometimes they have blue hair because of the coloring, because of the grays. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking old people. <laughs> We're laughing now. Comes out blue. We're laughing now because we can. Yeah, one day we're not. No. <laughs> Is it fortunate? Or maybe not getting a little. I don't know. But yeah, because like my granny and all her sisters, they would get this kind of. If you took like the weakest orange and put it on their head, I don't know what the fuck it was, man. You, I'm like, why bother? It was an orange. Yeah, like my granny and her sister and sissy Aggie used to get this fucking. I don't know what they used to get. Yeah, 
Yeah, I feel like she has to smash something else, too, or do something audible. Okay, let's give her another smash. We break a mirror? Yeah, break the mirror. She needs to yell something insane. You see that? That's what happened when the mirror saw my hair. (laughs) 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 All right, let's get everybody going. That's right. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is a flashback. (laughs) Little Robin S. Once the early 90s, 90, 91 hit, there were these, and I like vocals in house music. I don't, I really kind of like it. I like, you know, I like going to raise and shit, but I can't tell you, oh, I liked a certain song because it's all. I like a structure. And in the 90s with the house and all that, you had Robin S, you had Crystal Waters, you had, and then they like Snap, KLF, they all had vocals like these kind of housey vocals. And I sort of miss that. People will be listening are probably like, oh, Robin S is corny, man. Fucking Crystal Waters is corny. No, they're not. They're fucking great. <laughs> the reason you shouldn't kill the spiders in your house, according to oh, an great. entomologist. <laughs> We've been getting overrun and I've been killing some. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Even if you're not a full-blown arachnophobic, your reaction to spotting a spider skittering across your floor is probably some combination of shrieking and whacking it with the nearest shoe. Next time, you should take a deep breath, tip your hat, and let the eight-legged critter continue on its merry way. Um, Fuck you! No. Though you might prefer to believe that spiders rarely find their way into your immaculately clean home. That's almost definitely not the case. In an article for The Conversation, entomologist Matt Bertone and his colleagues... Found spiders in every single home in North Carolina. The truth is, spiders are important to our indoor ecosystem since they're generalist predators. They'll pretty much eat anything from the dead fly on your windowsill to the mosquito that had planned to make a midnight snack out of your face. They'll even eat other spiders. So whether a spider's just passing through your house or has taken up permanent residence in the upper corner of your closet, it's definitely working for its room and board. Also, the spiders in your house likely aren't the terrifying huge mammal-devouring specimens. In their inventory, Berton and his team primarily found common house spiders like harmless cobweb spiders and cellar spiders. While most spiders are venomous, their venom often isn't strong enough to affect you, and their fangs are often too small to pierce your skin. And if you shudder at the thought of spiders crawling over you when you're sleeping, keep in mind that it's not likely... Either our snoring, rustling, and even plain breathing are enough to keep them from investigating further. So I'm pretty convinced, I don't even need to finish this, but I'm pretty convinced a spider wrote this. How about the percentages or whatever that you eat how many fucking spiders and shit a year because you're sitting there with your mouth open? Right. Not to mention that I've had them drop right down on me when I'm sleeping or laying there falling asleep or I see them crawl right across the ceiling above me like they're going to come down and I've been bitten in my sleep. This is bullshit. They like to climb in under the sheets because it's warm and they're like, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's warm in here. I'm going to just curl right up here and just take a couple, I'll feed on her. I'll feed on her like a little baby. Yeah, I I can't find my way out of here. So I guess I'm just going to have to bite this person and suck on him like a vampire. Right. There are more spiders than humans on the planet. I think they outweigh us by, like, if, if you look up the statistics, it's crazy. And if they were supersized, we'd be dead. There's no way we could fucking take on the spiders. Okay, who wrote this? An entomologist from North Carolina. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put the vacuum down. Didn't you read what the entomologist said? I'm your friend. I don't think you're my friend. You're leaving your spider trash up in the corners. What, do you want me to go to the toilet? You need to take your business outside. Why are you in here anyway? You got a fucking TV with, with HD and shit. You're playing Dread and shit. I'm, you know, it's movie night sometimes. Yeah, well, guess what? There's lots of mosquitoes out there you can take care of. Those little flying gnats, they're everywhere. Go outside. You, there's a plethora of feasting for you to do. Yeah, but you got that zapper thing to take care of some, and then the ones that maybe escape, I take care of them. Have you gotten bit lately from a fucking mosquito? Yes. Well, I can't be fucking everywhere. You're not doing your job. You're going to have to vacate the premise. 
I can only paratroop down at a certain speed, okay? And then I got to swing, and I got to jump, and I got to catch this fucker. It takes a goddamn night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You got to die now, so bye. Are these my Akashic records? There's only one page. I only lived uh, two hours instead of two weeks. <laughs> what if all of a sudden, like, there's a log on Beck Maniac how many spiders she's murdered in her life? Nah, dude. No? Nah. I felt bad because I'm like, now something's in the afterlife because of me. I'm not snoring or stomping my feet like the end, whatever fucking doctor said. I'm sitting there watching the fucking tube and I see this thing just moving around quickly, like running on the candle, running on the fucking wall. Oh, yeah. They're aggressive. Go- this entomologist, actually, a.k.a. undercover spider, acts like they're all innocent, but they run at you. They don't sit there and think, oh, I shouldn't bite this person who, whose house I'm in. I'm just going to go ape shit because I got a fucking half of a brain with three brain cells and it only controls my legs and paratrooping. Right. And eight eyes. So I see all sorts of shit going on here. Yeah. No. No. That's complete fucking bullshit. Let's put this fucking dude, this doctor in the town uh, in the William Shatner movie that made me hallucinate spiders. Right. (laughs) When they were just everywhere, crawling everywhere and just fucking tying people up and sucking them dry. Yeah. No. You know, in the alien movies, when the people go on the roof and they go, welcome aliens. I feel like entomologists are those people like, hey, yeah, come on. But then it's just going to turn around on them and they're going to end up dying. What happens in the winter when there aren't fucking flies, gnats and mosquitoes? They then feed. what are they going to eat? Oh, you know what they're eating. Uh-huh. Our pets. Us. Nice fucking try, doctor. <laughs> I hope you get your bank accounts doing well. You can go to Cancun. <laughs> no. no. I'm actually getting worried because we started seeing them around the house every other day lately. And then when I go down the stairs to open up the door to the outside, in the corner there are some boxes in the, the landlord's door, and we put his mail on top of the boxes. I noticed this giant web, you know, in the corner of the boxes near the door, and a couple of spiders are in there. And then I exit, and I shut the door, and I look to my left, bottom left, another huge spider web with spiders in it. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? This is getting oh, bad. Oh, they're gathering. They're getting ready. Yeah. Winter is coming. Come in, sir, and make a nice warm web in the corner. How about you turn the fuck around with your eight legs and your eight eyes, and you paratroop down outside where you can eat things? But, sir, haven't you seen Charlotte's web? I am an innocent but little innocent spider. I have little ones to take care of. Well, that's your fucking problem. This isn't fucking Jurassic Park, okay? (laughs) All right? So I don't enjoy getting bitten and itching and feeling fucking weird the next day because of you. So the rule is you come in and you die. I promise not to bite you a disaster or the kittens. Okay. Yeah, you can you can hang out and watch the Yankee game then. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You know what? I probably did that spider a fucking... A solid. You know, a solid for killing them because the Yankees... Let me ask you. If you had to let one of these two creatures live with you all winter, you got to pick the one you would let live with you, okay? Yeah. One is a medium-built, solid, thick spider about the size of a half dollar. Or two is arcade roach. That's a really fucking tough one, man. That's a real tough one. Because even looking at a roach, it skis me the fuck out. It skis you know? me out. They're dirty. They carry it's disease. Just so ski- it's different than the fear of the spider. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, God. They're so disgusting. You see, spiders aren't disgusting. They're just weird and skeevy and little punks. Right. And I think roaches, when you turn the lights on, they scatter. So they're like more skeevy in the night. They're more like... <sighs> coming out yeah they startle you yeah and they um, hang out in the drains and shit and they and they get into your electronics this boom box feels warm yeah I, I think i'm going with the spider oh wow yeah if you said tarantula and a hissing cockroach uh, absolutely the cockroach you know i don't want a tarantula running around right that would be crazy but a li- little 
you know, I'll see him in the corner. Is he in the corner? Okay. Maybe I'll get one of those like uh, camera systems that when there's movement, it, it <laughs> zooms in on it so I can know where the fuck this thing is. Is it poisonous? No. No, it won't kill you or any, do anything bad. I'll just keep dibs on this thing before we go to bed and have a way that when I shut the door, seals. Plus, I think roaches be. would like have lots of babies. Yeah. And then you before oh, you know be it, yeah, like bed bugs. We're done. That's it. We have to set everything on fire and move. They're absolutely disgusting. I think you should tell everybody about Arcade Roach since we've talked about Pizza Rat, but now there's Arcade Roach. Oh, that's right. Right. There's Arcade Roach. What kind of music do you think you would have? Arcade Roach? It'd probably be some cool arcade music. (laughs) Yeah. And now comes the tale of the arcade roach. The tale of the arcade roach. When I go to the arcade, I got the high score on Miss Pac Man, 321,000. Congratulations. Nobody's beaten that shit that night. And my high is 428. I go outside to have a cigarette. A couple of steps down, you can sit and just kind of have a cigarette and shit. I'm smoking, hanging out. It's really lively. It's kind of funny. People are making me laugh. And then I look on the railing and this roach is running up the railing. And then he gets to the top. He swivels around a bit, looks around, goes back down the fucking thing. And then he disappears for a second. And then he goes back up the thing. And then he stops halfway and I snap the picture of arcade roach. We're talking about their skeevy, their awful and all that. But when he went to the top and stopped and like looked around and like was sniffing around, and then went back down, that made me think, uh, it's kind of like its own little personality. It was like, there's no food up here. I'm really hungry. Really? And, you think that's what it was thinking? And I don't have any fucking tokens for the arcade because I blew all my money getting a couple of Sixers. And uh, I don't know what to do if there's no food. And I just want to hang out with people. Yeah, and it just kind of just was going up and down right near the arcade. How big was and, he, and- by the way? Oh, he was big as, you know, those giant hissing cockroaches. This oh. was, and that's a 10. That wasn't that. It was probably like a six. Oh, that's still pretty hefty. That isn't like a little German cockroach. It just looked a little sad. Like, it didn't know that the garbage bin was right below me. I'm pointing. I'm going. <laughs> he doesn't know. I'm pointing. Dude, go down there. That's where all the garbage is, man. It's a feast down there. And he doesn't, he doesn't listen. Do you think maybe he was casing the joint? Yeah, I felt sad for him. <laughs> he just looked a little bummed. He wasn't scurrying about. He had no friends? Yeah, he had no friends. And the fact they're scared of us, I mean, even though I think that's kind of bullshit too, but they seem to, you know, not, I, I heard they don't like us. They they try and get away and that's why they're undercover and all that. And this one was just hanging out. He wasn't freaked out by the people. It's like when he looked around, he was looking at all the people going by. Oh, no. He was deciding, you know, he was deciding and thinking and it made me sad for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just said you were sad for a roach, a cockroach, a New York City cockroach size six. Yeah, it didn't fly at me. I should have blew some smoke in his face because I was smoking my bowl too. Yeah. And then maybe if, if I was feeling great, just scoop him up and throw him in the garbage. He would have had a good time. Get but him high, get him happened. munchies, and jumps right in. Now I'm wondering if I go back there and I sit in that same spot if I'm going to see arcade see roach? the fucking the arcade roach. Yeah, you'll see some big ones though. They run from the garbage when you're walking down the street. All the piles of the garbage bags. That's when a rat will run right in front of you, and you're like, oh shit. Or you'll see, like, a giant fucking roach, like, running in front of you. It's crazy, man. You hang on so, to that arcade roach picture, okay? We might need it later. Okay, I'll hang on. I'll put it in the UH folder. Okay, put it in the UH folder. And maybe I'll superimpose, or you can superimpose some disco lights behind it or some shit. <laughs> or, like, some, like, you know, 80s-looking backdrop with the sun, <laughs> but it's all digital-looking. You can put them at the arcade, man. Yeah. <laughs> We should actually fucking do this, what? right? <laughs> and write a little caption. Like pizza rat. Yeah, and we can sign the pictures for people Be like, as the roach. Pizza rat was so 2000 whatever. Now there's arcade roach. Arcade roach. <laughs> arcade roach. <laughs> so you're telling me your friend would whip out a comb in the middle of throwing snowballs and comb Yeah, one swipe to the left. 
one swipe on top to the right. What kind of comb did he have? Did he have a like a switchblade one? Nope, just that black twenty five cent fucking terrible. Yeah, the, the standard. Most, the cheapest little and I'd just be watching him. I'd cock my hand back and ready to hit and I'd look over and he'd be doing it and I'd just drop my hand and go, What are you fucking doing, dude? We're committing <laughs> crimes here. Like let's go out with the crime. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we used to nail cars like on the side of my friend's house or bushes. So we would hide next to the bushes. They could never see. And you would just throw the snowball and sometimes it would go off the fucking windshield. Yeah. Or the best is when you really threw it hard and hit the door and it'd be like. <laughs> and then sometimes they would screech and come running after us. But we knew the way to get up into the green garage. And once you get into the second level of the green garage, you can hop over this wall and be on a different street and get away. So they never caught us. Did you ever dent or break anything? Never broke anything. But one time we were next door to my friend's house that I was just talking about is my other friend, Uncle. And he had a tree. So we were hiding next to the tree. And a garbage truck came by and the window was open. <laughs> so when we, when there was like five of us, when we all unleashed our snowballs, the dude had a cigarette in his mouth and he was jamming with his buddy and they were like drinking or whatever. The snowballs went inside and were hitting them. And they were like, their hands were like swerving and they disappeared. So we're just chilling like, okay, that's cool. Then they came by again with like three cop cars behind them. Uh Uh-oh. Shots fired 147 Maple Street. Requesting backup. And then we all scattered and ran. I was with my friend and we went on a different street, went into somebody's yard and hopped up on their garage and was hanging out up there. This was on a hill, and we could see the whole neighborhood, and you can just see these cop cars circling around. Oh, they were hunting you, know? you guys. They were. We stayed up on that roof for like an hour, and then we had routes to hop fences home to our house. So it's not like we walked down the street, went around, went up. We were hopping fences. That's all we did. So we knew how to get to our house without being seen, got home. But one time I was driving and somebody hit my mom's car and the passenger side where I was, we were going to Wegmans or something, going grocery shopping. All of a sudden, and I looked to my right and I see the snowball explode. And my mom was like, what the fuck? And I'm just, calm down, mom. I do it too. It's okay. That was my fun delinquency besides blowing shit up. We could have killed somebody and we didn't. So thank God for that. Turn the buzzer on. Okay. And you go to town like this on your hair. Yeah, maybe the Floby or some stupid oh thing or God, whatever. Oh my God, the Floby would be great. Let's you know it. George Clooney still cuts his hair with the Floby? No. Nope. He does his own hair with the Floby. Come on. Yeah, if you look it up, you'll you'll see him talking about it. Because, you know, he his hair is as short as possible. It's just as clean cut as possible. I can see the Floby working. I bet you you'd rock a Floby right about now. <sighs> it's bad. I went out to go to the surf rock thing. I put some shit in my hair, you know, tried to mold it. But nothing. It was like molding uh, Michael Myers mask hair. Well, maniacs, there you have it. This concludes the writing sessions.